Hi everyone, my name is Karina. I'm currently research engineer, AI researcher at Anthropic. Mostly I'm working on post-training team, so training production models, uh, trying to evaluate them, mostly doing a lot of like behavioral engineering. So like somewhat like creating like what kind of behaviors we want in the models, trying to fix uh, some issues such as refusals and more. Um, yeah, so this is my job. And I unfortunately cannot share a lot, but what I will share is kind of like my personal side projects that I literally did last night with Claude um, and other projects that I've done before. But one thing that I would like everybody to think more is that like language models should become world-class curators. And especially that's important because they are so, so, they know so much about the world. And one lacking piece that I think I would like to move language models more is that like they should become more of an editors, curators, and just like have more, you know, style or like opinionated views and stuff like that. So a project that I wanted to do, I'm like, I'm a huge fan of like art. Um, and one of the, my most favorite um, art museums in New York is at the Frick Collection. One thing that they really cool, they did very nicely in that gallery is the whole like creation part of it. And I was moved by how much of an effort they've done in terms of like, research um, to tell the people the supply chain of the paintings. And I found it very cool. And I thought like, well, Claude should know this at scale. Like I should be able to search for any painting and I should be able to like learn more where does this paint came from. Um, so this is like a couple of paintings. Um, yeah, and uh, let's see. So I made this literally yesterday at night, so please don't judge me. <laughs> um, it's written in React. Um, so basically it's a text to image and image to image search. And I scraped some images from the Met uh, API. Um, and you can do something like uh, Monet. And it will come up with the most similar images from here. Or you can do something more detailed if you're interested in, like, I'm interested in, like, in gold sheets of paint. And uh, it's a little bit slow. Uh, or, like, any kind of, like, things like this. Maybe it's updating. Um, or I can also upload the image. Um, and it will come up with the similar uh, images in terms of like style or the um, color wise or aspect ratio wise or um, something else. So you can also do like Apple or something like this. Sorry, it's a little bit slow, I don't know why. Um, <clears throat> another thing, so this is like what I did with embeddings, but one thing that I also did uh, with Claude is to generate me um, a little bit more information for each image. And uh, specifically asked Claude to come up with historical context, the supply chain of the painting, and other information. And uh, we can search for like allegory. And uh, there will be some paintings on like allegorical. Uh, one thing that I also did is to like have little sidebar. But you can see like how um, you can get like more information on this. And uh, one thing to expand if I had more time is that extract like things from uh, the model responses. For example, in supply chain, you have a lot of like mentions of the countries and represent them in a more like engaging and visual way. So like I would represent them like creating a map 
and like see the, um, the supply chain through the map itself instead of the text. Um, what else? But one another thing that I did was uh, when sampling model, um, when sampling responses from the model is like fact checking. So how do you know that whatever cloud re uh, responded the first time actually um, did it correctly, did not hallucinate? And uh, one specific thing that I did was to um, ask the model, uh, I sampled like 10 different times from the model and uh, had self-consistent checks. So you can like check for what's the most uh, consistent content among those small responses and have like more confidence in this. You, another way to do this is that you can um, have a grader model to grade the responses from um, the actual model that you, that you want to like evaluate. Another thing that you can do is, let's say you're very interested and you really want to like fact check where exactly did the artist paint this painting. And um, you can have like a golden source like Wikipedia and extract all the claims from Wikipedia and cre create like basically your own like data set that you want to evaluate with a golden answer. And the golden answer can be like, you know, Paris. And, um, somehow you create this like auto evaluation for yourself. So this is how you can like fact check the models a little bit more, like have more confidence in their responses. Um, a year and a half ago, I did quite a similar project, um, but for um, fashion uh, search recommendation, where um, you can basically also curate like fashion items and then go to the specific website and buy it directly. Uh, but the, like any keyword will work here. So like black turtlenecks will give you like all the black turtlenecks. And one thing that I was thinking like, okay, like that was like a year and a half ago where we didn't know, we didn't like release any Claude. And I was thinking like, how would I use Claude in this specifically use case? And um, one thing to do is like more personalized recommendation system. So you can like create different like curation strategies for the model. One thing is that like, hey, I need you to decide whether the item is relevant to the user or not. Um, say yes or no, basically. This is like a very simplest prompt. But you kind of rely on the model's judgment on this. Uh, a little bit more sophisticated prompt, maybe you can like create a criteria that what exactly does the customer care, or the, the user cares, maybe this particular user cares about the price, is pretty sensitive to the price, and so you can like adapt this prompt to this. Um, and then have like a little bit more like robust evaluation, like add to like score-based evaluation to this. Another way I use Claude is to help me with like research visualization. Um, as I publish some papers, um, I usually help researchers to do interesting visualizations. And one thing that we did here in this research paper is not exactly, not only like we use Claude to like create a bunch of evaluations, but also like I used Claude to help me to label all different data points together. So I clustered using KNN and uh, use the cluster to like ask Claude to label me uh, the cluster itself. So you can use in a wide variety of use cases. Yeah. Um, one thing that I wanted actually, yeah, this is, <laughs> uh, this is like a very side project of mine. It's not finished, but one thing that a lot of developers care about is like cost, right? And like, I would like everybody to like have this kind of type of plot where the x axis is the cost and y axis is the accuracy because some models, even though might be very, very good at, at your task, but you may have like paid much more for that while like smaller models could have done the same exactly accuracy for the same like performance almost at, uh, at the same performance, but at a cheaper price. So that's something for inspiration, I guess. Yeah, and I guess we are hiring at Anthropic. Um, 
I'm hiring a couple of people in the next month or so. We are building out a little bit of a team to do more evaluations. Like measuring the progress of models is like really, really hard, but um, that's where the fun is. Yeah, thank you so much.